in our recent episodes, we've been doing a lot of discussion about storytelling and general creativity and inspiration and innovation. And in our last episode, we chatted with Judith Hayner over at the Art Museum, and she had a few things to say about storytelling that didn't make the previous episode. So we're going to put them in this episode, and that's what we're going to make this one about. It's the Grand Trunk launch ramp, boat ramp. These train tracks used to go down there and set up on a car ferry, a train car ferry. Now, in previous episodes, you've heard me talk about storytelling and Storytelling and still photography is a, is a strange animal. Traditionally in storytelling, you think of something like reading a book or watching a movie where you have a plot, you have a situation, you have characters in a situation. And then there is art without any moving parts, such as sculpture and painting and graphic design, where all of these mediums or media start with a blank canvas. Having a blank canvas is such a huge advantage compared to photography because you can conceptualize that story in advance and then lay it all out. It's all under your control. That's what makes photography all the more difficult is that we have to use what's already there. Now you may think, well, we can make the set, we can make the setting, we can pose our models and people that's styling, that's stylizing. Stylists do that. When a stylist is involved in your photography, the stylist has their art and you as a photographer have your art. But this kind of plays into what I had said last episode about where do we draw the line between photography and duplicating? Where is the art and photography if it's merely pointing the camera at something and clicking the picture, pulling the trigger? I think it's safe to say that in this episode, we're going to be presenting more questions than really receiving answers. I think it's a necessity here. We're going to be opening up a can of worms, I think. It needs to be explored. In our last episode, we were chatting with Judith Hayner, the executive director at the Muskegon Museum of Art, and we were sitting in the current exhibition called the Michigan Regional. If you're in Muskegon, I recommend checking it out. It's here now through August fourth or something like that. I'll put the date right here for you. And uh, let's uh, let's get back to chatting with Judy. Where are we sitting? We are sitting at the Muskegon Museum of Art in the uh, middle of the 88th Annual Regional, which opens today, May 12th. Um, it's an exhibition of art by Michigan artists. Uh, when I say 88, sometimes we ro that rolls off our tongue fast, but that means we've done it 88 times. You know, the museum was established in 1912, and starting in the 20s, Lulu Miller, who was the director at that time, began a show to feature Muskegon artists. That's actually the history. The regional started as a Muskegon artist, local artist. Um, and over the years, it has expanded to be the lake shore, up and down the lake shore, from the bridge to the border, and then inland to to Kalamazoo and Lansing. And finally, in the last four years, we just opened it statewide. Any Michigan artist can submit to the regional. It's a jury show. We always have a professional juror uh, select the, the work from what has been uh, submitted. So we're in the middle of it, and we're very excited. We're always excited here to see what the artists of Michigan are up to, and um, there's no disappointment here this year. Now, as we're recording this, Tonight is the reception, yes. so when this goes right. online, it's right. past tense. How long is this exhibit open for? The exhibit goes uh, up through August 3rd. So all summer almost. Yep, all summer. Most of summer. Yep. And we have about 140 some works of art, I should know this, um, that were accepted out of 700 that were submitted. It's a very competitive show, and when artists are, are accepted, it's a, it's a resume item. Um, it's considered a very prestigious show in the state of Michigan. Bonus. I mean, certainly there is such a thing as born with a natural artistic talent, but can it be learned? Can it be developed? Well, yes, absolutely. Even if you're not innately born with it. See, it, there was an era when artwork, even when you weren't looking for it, was all over the place and it was always good artwork. For a limited time, if you buy my fine artwork at 50% off, I'll give you a coupon for a free oil change.
I'm Johnny Lunchbox and I'm so creative I once walked by an art museum. Free oil change because I'm creative. Naturally, we like our artwork to be artistic, whatever that means. And what is artistic? Well, we want it to have some sort of aesthetic value. We want it to tell us a story, certainly. But what is that? Well, again, no answers here. Can of worms. Let's rejoin Judy and our conversation we had with her at the Art Museum. As executive director of the Muskegon Museum of Arts, she gets to pick one in this exhibit, and she awards it the Director's Choice Award. I, that's one of the fun parts of my job is I always get to give a merit award to the works to a work in the regional. Um, I remember the first year I did that, I was very very nervous about it because like, oh my God, what if I pick something bad? But but it's actually a really fun thing to be able to do. And this piece, brick, brick by Brick, Tools of the Tra Trade, is by Gretchen Ween, I think is her name. Where's she from? Um, she's from Grand Rapids, I believe, okay. the Grand Rapids area. Um, really captured me because of its of what I thought was a very original concept to to do paintings. And if you looked at it closely, there's really a beautiful painting on every single one of the trowels. Um, and just the paintings themselves are quite wonderful. But then to put it onto vintage Mexican bricklaying trowels really uh, captured me, particularly in the light of the national conversation. I need to interrupt here for a moment and note that the part about the vintage Mexican brick lane trowels is not mentioned on the display anywhere. And I know, I wish I didn't know that when I was looking at that because the images are a bit haunting and it is a showstopper. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the artist's website, Gretchen says that she painted these trowels in Mexico from where she bought them at a flea market. And also on the website regarding this, uh, this display, uh, the obvious metaphor, this is a quote, the obvious metaphor suggests the labor involved in building a life. So I really liked that. And I have no idea if that's where the artist was coming from. But all of that so came together to in that my was... head um, okay. along with the artistry and the originality of the concept. Yeah, I got to admit, I saw it about a half an hour ago for the first time and it stopped me in my tracks. Mm -hmm. Now, does it say on the plaque next to it that they are trials from Michigan, from Michigan, from Mexico? I think so. Okay. I'm trying to think, how do I know that? But <laughs> if it didn't say there, it must have been on the, the artist statement that I saw on the back of it uh, when they first brought it in. Now, during this chat, there is really a funny sense of irony as we explore how a particular piece of art can speak to us differently. The story may mean something entirely different from one person to another. Right, because I must admit, the first time I saw it, I had no idea what the, the right. title meant, what it was trying to say. I just was, I mean, sometimes it's okay to be moved because it's so, it's got an aesthetic value to it. And, right, And that's right. part of the storytelling right. is the emotion you feel. And I think that, that actually addresses an issue that I think people uh, face in art museums. And sometimes they're not comfortable because they think everything has to have a meaning or they have to understand it. What you just said is really important. Just let it speak to you. Just just react to it. It doesn't have to. A work of art does not have to. Doesn't say an automatic thing to everybody. It's it's what it generates in you. What it makes you feel. Um, and I just think people think that they have to know more than they do. When you come to an art museum, just enjoy the visual um, feast that's in front of you. That's all you have to do. Are we learning anything here? Are we answering any questions? I believe we are. I think the big one here is don't seek out the story. Don't seek out the aesthetics. Don't seek out the artisticness of a work of art. Let the work of art speak to you. I mean, if you're on a quest, if you want to seek something, get a Where's Waldo book. That's what we're learning as far as art appreciation goes. But what about as photographers as we make our work? Uh, it's almost been a recurring theme in this series of videos that I'm uploading here. Be deliberate with where you set up about your scene. What kind of a story can you tell by being at one angle versus another angle? 
Let's rejoin Judy for a couple more minutes and then homework. The Louvre has its Mona Lisa. What is your Mona Lisa here? Oh, nice question. Um, we have, one of the things about this museum that makes it so unique is that a small museum in a small town, when we were built in 1912, we were the first building in America built in a city this size of 30,000 or less expressly to hold art. I love that story. Um, so the fact that this art museum exists in Muskegon in this county of 170,000 people is really quite unique. What's also unique is the quality of the collection. The works of art that are in this collection are really stunning. When people visit here from anywhere and if they have any art experience, they're always surprised at what they're seeing on our walls. So our Mona Lisa, um, that's the like building, picking. That sounds like well, the fact that we exist at all. Okay. You know, in in what is a small, blue collar, not without its challenges town for the last century and yet we're here 104 years later um, I think it says so much about this community but in terms of the artworks you're asking me to pick a favorite kid um, <laughs> I would say of the Mona Lisa's uh, certainly we are extremely well known for Tornado Over Kansas that is one of the most popular pieces in the collection we've had it since 1935 uh, by John Stuart Curry. Uh, Edward Hopper New York Restaurant is a phenomenal painting, also been uh, in this institution since the 30s. Uh, some of our best work came in during the depressive depression years. Um, we are the only museum in Michigan that has a painting by Edward Hopper. We're kind of proud of that. Um, those two, my personal favorites, I love the Huey Lee Smith uh, painting that we have in the main gallery. Um, the Robert Henry Laughing Child. I mean, it's, it's impossible to pick one. But we do have some true stars in the art world that live here and that belong to this community. The West Michigan. Arts are nothing new to West Michigan. No, they aren't. But I will say about Muskegon, and I don't think people realize this, and I kind of preach this all the time, we have great water assets. I love Lake Michigan and Muskegon Lake. I love seeing water every single day when I drive around this community. Well, here's what makes Muskegon unique. It's not the water. Everybody from New Buffalo to the bridge has water, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually the confluence of cultural resources in this scrappy little town. We have a nationally accredited art museum. We have a symphony, a professional symphony. We have a civic theater organization. We have a historic museum center that has phenomenal assets. We have a historic public library. Uh, we have a, the Frohn's Hall Theater. We have a confluence of uh, cultural assets that you're not going to find in any other city from New Buffalo to the bridge. I would challenge anyone to find all the pieces that we have. That's what makes Muskegon unique, I think. Judy mentioned a piece of art that's hanging in the Muskegon Museum of Art called uh, New York Restaurant by Edward Hopper. You may, not have, you may not know the name Edward Hopper. He's also got another piece of art called Nighthawks. Maybe you don't know that piece of art by name, but it is one of the most easily recognized pieces of art in the world. That's this one here. All right, your homework. Let's go to Edward Hopper's website. I'll link it down in the description below and go through his paintings. Note how we're looking at the objects, at, the, at walls and buildings. Are we looking at them directly or are we looking at them at an angle? Are we seeing the corners of a room? Are we seeing the corners of buildings? Do you get a sense of isolation? What about the characters in there? Is there a sense of, I'm alone, I want to be alone? Or is there a sense of openness? How do you feel looking at these? Do you feel that isolation? And also, do you feel voyeuristic? Like... You find yourself looking at the art through windows. That's how that's done. I'm John with Picture Michigan. Keep pulling that trigger. Yes. First off, I'd like to thank all of my sponsors. Be sure to uh, pay them a visit, spend lots of money with them. They're not actually spending money on me. It's called free sponsorship. How about setting up the camera in front of all the sponsors of the 5K race tomorrow? You know what I mean.
it'll be the past tense by the time you see this. It's, uh, boy, I'm like this major league freak show here. Everyone's got to stop and look. So we're back to aesthetic value. Is it pretty? This, the sign says chocolate milk means more protein power in every glass. Where was this sign when I was young and I needed proof for my mom? It's always my intention to look for tires on the beach. Excellent. You should be on more often, Judith. Thank you. Thank you. Be happy to see you.